Welcome to the Digging Deeper Podcast, brought to you by New Hope Church. My name is Matt, and I'm so very excited to dive into today's topic. Before we get there, though, let's go around the room and see how everybody's doing. Sarah, how are you doing today? Oh, great. Uh, youth was great last night. Yeah. We had a bonfire for every life group, mm-hmm. so there was like 14 bonfires, and <laughs> oh, we are, the church is still here, is. everyone, and here. no one went so to the excited. hospital, so it was a great <laughs> night. Um, I no, like I, those measurables. Yes, yes, very good achievement. <laughs> like we got close, <laughs> yeah, but right, it didn't right. happen, that's which right. means yeah. it was a good night. And we, we were saying the in the car ride back about <laughs> wrapping up last night, I was like, well, we had to put out a few fires, and I was like, hey... We put out a few like literal fires, <laughs> right. not like metaphorical ones. Nice so that is kind of great. Yeah. And I got to hear uh, Ruben Baez speak this morning mm-hmm. at his school in his chapel. That was cool. And yeah, yeah. so oh, good, really good cool. week so far. Uh, that's awesome. Awesome. PT, how you doing? I'm doing fantastic. I feel, Eleni and I looked at each other the other night and went, how is it possible we get to live this life? You know, mm. God is so good. It's not without its challenges, but mm. we're just so blessed in, in so many ways. And we're, um, yeah, thanking the Lord and. And uh, happy to be in what we're we're doing, uh, for sure. How about you, Matt? You're looking good. Thank you, sir. I am doing very well. Doing awesome. Really well, yeah. No, things are great. Uh, lots of really good stuff going on. Lots of things moving forward, projects wise, and um, just some really cool connects with people over the last couple of weeks. And you know, spurring on some of our our life group leaders as they're helping walk people through challenge. And and yeah, it's been really good and encouraging. So really enjoying that. And. Uh, yeah, just happy to be here. To be completely <laughs> honest with you, um, and I keep telling people, don't don't take it for granted. Be yeah. thankful that you're mm-hmm. in a space where God is doing yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, doing great. Doing really good. That's awesome. But uh, yeah, I want to dive into your sermon, PT. Excellent job. I said it four times on Sunday, <laughs> and I'll say it again. Uh, you did an incredible job. <laughs> you had to. There were four services. <laughs> that's right, that's true. That's true. You were forced to say <laughs> that's it. That's right. That's right. No. No, but uh, in all honesty, um, you did such an incredible job navigating, you know, that passage in First Timothy that I think has historically caused a lot of division with people and frustration and confusion and struggle and all of that. And uh, you did a really good job of of both intentionally and and firmly walking the road of explaining it, but also gently from the perspective of like this is a real stuff that people are wrestling through, and we need to walk with them with in in it. And so. Just did a really good job with that. Thanks, Matt. It was a group effort for sure. I didn't write that sermon by myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've been talking about it as staff. We've been sharing articles and research. Yeah. Uh, and as as some of you might know, it would, our sermons go out to, you know, six people every week on yep. a Monday, and yep. everybody chimes in. So it's a collaborated effort. And if it sucks, it's not all my fault. <laughs> uh, but if it's great, it's not all my fault. All, not all my credit either. Yeah. And so, no, I, I appreciate Sarah's input into that and mm-hmm. articles that were sent my way. Yeah, it's good. No, it's very Thank good. You. No, absolutely. So uh, today, I want to kind of focus on two specific pieces of the sermon. Um, there was a lot in there, and actually, mm-hmm. some of it will unpack uh, after actually after your sermon mm-hmm. this uh, coming week, uh, Sarah. And I'm looking forward to that as well. But today I want to look at two pieces that you had touched on, PT. The first one was this idea of of leaning into God's design for each of us. Um, you, you made a statement in there, and I want to spend some time unpacking it. You said, when we reject who we are by nature, we will not flourish. Um, which all by itself, we could probably spend a whole podcast mm-hmm. just on that statement. For sure, yeah. Um, and... And you, in the midst of that conversation, and maybe I'll get you to start with just giving us a little context for what was going on there, but my my question actually has to relate to something you said right after it, which is, you know, you, you may wrestle with your nature, but it is far better to kind of wrestle through the uncomfortableness of the feelings and the thoughts than it is to have to then wrestle through, you know, the, the changing of your physical self. Um, so maybe unpack the statement a little bit, and then we can dive into that piece as well. <laughs> so much. So many ways we could go yeah. <laughs> with <laughs> unpacking that. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe just in, in basic general piece, I could say that, you know, none of us are completely comfortable with our bodies. No. Mm-hmm. Whether it's how you look or what you can do. I suck at sports. As a young man, you're not a man if you can't at least partly play some sports yeah, or even follow. I, for some reason I cannot seem to follow even on television. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's the way my mind is wired. And so I don't know all the names and all this. And, and if you mean depend, follow sports, all, all the yeah. names of the people, 
right? All yeah. uh, of the athletes, of the teams, of the everything, right? None of that is clear in my head, no matter how hard I've tried over the years, right? And so it eliminates you from many circles where a real man would be, right? Mm -hmm. Or people are born with handicaps. Mm -hmm. They're born missing limbs. They're born, uh, you know, with certain deformities and they have to live at peace with, we all have to make peace with the fact that our bodies do reflect the, the, uh, the image of God in one way or another, mm -hmm. but not maybe the way you want yeah. or maybe not way the way most people want. Mm -hmm. And so then do we fight against that and rail against that? Or do we make peace with that? Or thank God, sometimes medical science can fix things mm -hmm. and that's a wonderful thing too. So it's quite complex and nuanced, but yeah. do we live in war against nature mm -hmm. in, in, in particular with the way our bodies are wired or do we find ways to make peace with that? Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. living in a fantasy world never brings peace to anyone. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I just made things more confusing. No, 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 no. <laughs> no you, you bring up some really good points about, um, the value of facing the uncomfortable versus living in a fantasy world. I think that's an important piece to highlight um, because we, uh, unfortunately we do live in a culture that wants to lean into that fantasy world of, well, if you don't like it, it doesn't exist, you know? And, and that is in stark contrast to reality <laughs> as much as you want to pretend, right? Yeah. Physically changing or transitioning your body. Mm -hmm. For example, mm -hmm. the big piece these days from a male to a female or vice versa yeah. is just wrought with, impossibilities yeah and so is that road going down that road going to bring more peace mm -hmm. with all the effort and energy required or would it the effort and energy required to make peace with your physicality yeah and help your mind and heart get around that mm -hmm. and i'm not we don't say any of that lightly or cruelly yeah no. recognizing that this is a big challenge for uh, it, for all of us in sm some small ways and for others in huge yes. ways yeah absolutely and and Again, with that being the case where we do recognize that this is like, for some people, this is a huge thing. What has been your guys' process? You know, how have you helped people? What words of encouragement have you used to help people actually address the feelings and the thoughts mm -hmm. as they're trying to wrestle with the nature piece and that thing? Go ahead, Sarah. Yeah, I think we can try to curate Ultra Here New Hope. I mean, we're part of our mission is to bring them come, and that means transform all the cultures we're a part of and so we could do that in our schools and our workplaces the micro cultures around us and i'm not talking about top down trying to yeah. Yeah. big c culture but in all the places where we live and i think you know another huge way um that really dramatically affects people and pastor tom mentioned this on sunday is when we're not uh the shape of our body whether it's fitness level you're mm -hmm. too small you're too big you're too fat you're too you know especially when people that really struggle with body dysmorphia of they see their body and they literally cannot see, you know, you know, they see mm -hmm. someone who's overweight when they're actually um, unhealthily underweight. Yeah. Um, and so, like, how do we curate the cultures we're around to be really positive and healthy for people to embrace who they are? And so whether that's, you know, helping our young people to try to protect them from some of the obsessed with image things mm -hmm. um, and media or whether that's to, uh, you know, like Pastor Tom gave a great example of like, he was not wired for sports. He didn't like it. He didn't want to do it. So in what culture, there's lots and lots of young men mm -hmm. exactly like that. So how do we make our culture a place where it doesn't, we don't tell uh, those young men that there's something wrong with them and they're not really a man. They're just a different kind. God wired them for something else. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, sending those messages in our families, in our church, and even being the person at school that can just say a positive word to someone uh, when they're clearly feeling like having a hard time accepting this piece of them that they feel uncomfortable with, mm -hmm. um, I think can bring a lot of light and hope and saying like, well, actually maybe I don't have to change mm -hmm. uh, this thing that would be very difficult to change about who I am. And I can flourish and embrace God's design for me in who I actually am made to be. Yeah, no, absolutely. PT, what are your thoughts on that? Well, right away as I go to Nathan, my son, yeah, Pastor Nathan at New Hope Church, and I'll never forget, I think it's this grade two teacher who, a parent teacher, wanted to sit Elaine and I down and let us know that he was uh, a, ram a rambunctious handful. Yeah. And, it, and she was not pleased. There was no 
joy on her face when she communicated <laughs> this. The body language was not approving. Yeah. And I just sm- smiled and said, yeah, I know. Isn't he wonderful? Mm. And I think that made her even more upset. <laughs> and uh, she didn't have to live with him day in and day out like we did. And 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 I just refused to, you know, accept that he, there was something wrong, mm-hmm. that, that he needed medication or whatever. And he did have way, and still does. If you're at New Hope Church, you know. Yeah. Nathan Absolutely. has more energy than everybody else. <laughs> yeah. uh, ne- I'm close to Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, and, and uh, and he's got a lot going on in his head all the time, mm-hmm. and um, and and so to uh, compared to his brothers, right, mm-hmm. and and the rest of the family, and so it's just like God made you this way, and it's good. Yeah. And I remember him crying, going like, "I'm a bad boy," mm-hmm. and sometimes he was, yeah. and aren't we all? <laughs> yeah, uh, but uh, it's like, no, God. And I, this was a phraseology I came up with: God just made more of you to control. Mm. And you've got, you know, you got to do self-control yeah. and, and you got a lot more to control. And, and I'm not sure if that's accurate or good, but my point was simply like, you're not bad. You reflect the God's image. Yes. It's getting you in trouble at school and it's hard for you, but it's for a reason. Yeah. yeah. And now here at New Hope. Oh my word, is exactly yeah. what that reason was. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We see, for those of you who don't know, like he knows everybody's name and something about everybody mm-hmm. with about 15 to 1800 people. And is on top of so many things that the rest of us can't do. And, mm-hmm. and God wired him that way. Yeah. And that's both a blessing and a curse as all, as our bodies and minds are for all of us. Yeah. Mm. I think, uh, you know, you know, you're tapping into a language we use actually a lot. Um, if you've ever mm. have been part of our kids church team or right. junior youth or many years at day camp, we, yeah. we often draw this like Venn diagram where you have this thing in the center that you're like, this is this thing that I don't really like about myself. Um, you know, and I've, I've shared this example about myself all the time, but that I didn't like that it was loud and that I was like, you know, all that stuff. I wanted to be the nice, quiet Christian girl. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you can see how there's a huge part of that, that if that's really the core of who you are, then it isn't a mistake. It's part of the image of God in you, but it can also become twisted by sin. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, the pride comes in and then you interrupt people because you think what you have to say is more important than what they have to say. Mm. Or like, you, you know, the self-control piece, a lack of self-control makes you, you distract others and whatever. When like, you know, you could just learn more self-control. But that part of you um, that is the core of who you are reflects the image of God. Mm. And so some of these things that we struggle with, it's like part of it, if it's the core of who you are, is put in you on purpose for a purpose. And just because it gets twisted by sin, uh, that doesn't mean it's not a way God purposely designed you. Yeah, no, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I've, I've noticed even in my, uh, as a parent, I've noticed even with my own kids, you know, you don't have to spend a lot of time highlighting all the things they're doing wrong. Like they're well aware. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but one mm-hmm. of the things you have to spend a lot of time doing is pointing out the attributes of Christ in them. Yes. Um, and I think that principle, which you guys have spoken to, is a key piece of this. Is like like letting people know that that God has done a good work, and mm-hmm. He'll continue to do a good work in them. Mm-hmm. They just I, we don't live in a culture that shares that enough, and I, I think that's a big piece of this whole process. And that's that part of mm-hmm. you know you, you want to recognize and walk with people who are struggling with this. Well, part of that is letting them know that God has actually created them awesome and that he wants to do an incredible work in them and is doing an incredible work. Because again, we, we don't really need anybody to point out our faults. I think we're all pretty good at that self inventory for the most part. Um, but, uh, but that piece of constantly speaking truth into people's lives, uh, as a piece, I think that's, that helps with this process and as a piece we do at new hope a lot. I mean, that's why we have things like seven steps and mm-hmm. we have mm-hmm. a 911 plan mm-hmm. because it's actually all, it all centers on this idea of, filling you up with truth, um, right? You've listened to lies for how many years of your life, mm-hmm. and that doesn't just go away because you decide it goes away. You yeah. have to now refill your life with truth. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and yeah, so it's a, it's a really important piece of that, I think, as well. I think, you know, Disney encourages us to follow dreams. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there's something really good with that. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think, you know, how do you help people um, spend time dreaming about how you are uniquely reflecting the image of yes. God mm. and how he might use you yeah. with that unique giftedness 
to f- bring him glory and to yeah. further his kingdom. So yeah. rather than follow the dreams of one day I want to be a baseball player, yeah, <laughs> you know, as you learn more about who you are, mind, body, and soul, and mm-hmm. how you reflect God's image, what might that look like yeah. in serving Jesus' mm-hmm. kingdom? Yeah, absolutely. And that's a good fantasy life, you know? Mm-hmm. And then start leaning into some of those places and yeah. see what God pours, you know, yep. fuel on. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, <clears throat> a piece that goes with that, I think, too, because I've heard it, because I love that idea of dreaming into what what can you know what could God do with this? What could He do with me? You know, and the the kickback I always hear is, well, like He can't do anything with me, right? <laughs> yeah. And then so then lie you know, from hell. Yeah. That's right, and that's and that's it, and and that's when you got to encourage people, like then get around people who are going to speak this into your life, yes. yeah. because you can't see it yourself yet. That's right, um, yeah. and that's again why we need life group and we mm-hmm. need community so much because we need people to speak truth in when we can't see it. Mm-hmm. That's why corporate worship is so powerful. Sometimes you're not feeling it. Yeah. But having 300 people singing it beside yeah. you and declaring it makes it a little bit easier um, to declare it sometimes. There are quadriplegics and men without arms or legs that are making an impact in the world mm-hmm. yeah. for Jesus. Yeah. You can too. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, still on this, uh, I want to shift a little bit, uh, still on this topic of God, leaning into God's design. Uh, you, had, you had talked about this idea of, um, you know, the high and holy calling of of bearing children, bearing and raising children as part of, uh, God's design for women. Um, and, and the question that came out of that is like, how, how do you encourage women who can't have children or, or struggling with this whole thing of children and wrestling through that? What encouragement do you give? Cause I can only imagine there's probably this feeling of, of failure if you know, you can't have children, obviously I'm not speaking from experience, but mm-hmm. That would be my assumption. And so, a grief over something yeah. you never had. Yeah, Is absolutely. something I hear a lot, es- yeah. especially from women mm-hmm. uh, struggling with, with that. Is so, it's like, yeah. So speak, so speak into that uh, for me, if you would. Just based Well, on I'll, I'll just echo back, I think, to a previous sermon mm-hmm. where, you know, I didn't have a dad. Um, and yet I had a plethora of father figures to yeah. model my life after. Yeah because I was in a church and there were fathers in the faith in the church. And there were men who took time to teach me Sunday school, to, to disciple me, to teach me to preach, to teach me how, and you know, one did one, and not one of them was perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, but God brought these different people in because I went to church and I went to places where godly men hung out yeah. and uh, they've, imp- they have influenced me more than they know. When I meet them now, I tell them and they they get all shy and, and, and Aw, oh, shucks. And, you know, because they didn't think they were making a, a big impact. And, and and it's because God was making a big impact through them in my life. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so that's a, that, 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 the opportunities for that at New Hope are ridiculous. That's mm-hmm. true. Like, it's just absolutely ridiculous. Tell mm-hmm. me which one night of the week you have free. And uh, <laughs> oh, my I word. So I'll hook you up. <laughs> like the oldest, most decrepit people, sorry, Bettys, uh, that are, uh, well, in our church are there you. making a profound impact at absolutely. junior youth, yeah. oh, my word, and, youth yeah. and all over the place. Yeah. Kids' church, like it's just amazing. Mm, yes. Absolutely. Sarah, can you speak to this as well? <clears throat> yeah, I think. You know, logistically, there's two big categories. Mm -hmm. There's people who, um, you know, you know, whether they've been single for their whole life or they've never been in in a relationship where they were able to to have children. Um, And then often that is like that encouragement, exactly like Pastor Tom talked about. And we know Paul says there's unique ways you're going to be able to serve the kingdom as a single person or even as a couple who are childless, you have less of a household to manage and reach out to other people. But then there's also obviously, and um, there are many men and women struggling with infertility Mm -hmm. and um, you know, there's a, (laughs) there's a pretty unique pain to that in the sense that it's like, it's almost like every month yeah, you have this grief of, grieving for something that you don't actually have. Um, I know for people who've been struggling with this for a long time, the year that even I spent trying to get pregnant is like, yeah, that's nothing, but it was long enough to feel that like mm-hmm. every month this sucks. And then you see, and the, the, the biggest, the big, the hardest point for me yeah. was a, a, a young, um, <laughs> a kid I had had in junior youth, um, coming to church and she was pregnant for the third time with, with a different father and you say praise god because she kept the baby yeah so praise god for that but for me i was like really god mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. she 
really. Yeah. She gets to get pregnant. Mm -hmm. And me and Dave, who did all the right things, yeah. and now we want to <laughs> have kids and we're going to raise them to love you, and we don't get to get pregnant. Mm. Um, so I think there's, you know, there's so many different things you end up wrestling through of like, am I not good enough to have kids? Why wouldn't God bless me in this way? Is this his plan for my life? Mm -hmm. Or is this, yep, and sometimes the man's born blind and it's not because of his sin or his pain. And then the process of wrestling with like, how, however this came through the brokenness in our world, God will certainly make good of it. Mm -hmm. And he can, has a plan for you, whether it's to adopt children, to become foster children mm -hmm. or foster parents, or to reach out to many different um, kids and serve through the church in particular. Um, so I think, you know, whatever it is, for whatever reason you're in that situation, God will make good of it for his glory mm -hmm. and for his good and for the kingdom and lean into that. And uh, I think there's a radical acceptance of the pain that comes along with that. I think of some dear friends right now who are going through mm -hmm. Uh, they are choosing to continue to bear the burden of responsibility to take on pain and continue to take on pain so that they can take care of children who have nobody. Yeah. And uh, it's not fair and it sucks. And it's exactly what Jesus did, mm -hmm. right? He said, I'll take on the pain. And he took on the pain that he... Uh, he wasn't his. Yeah. And so I, I know that can be a painful journey in many ways. And sometimes you're inviting yourself into more pain, but that might be Christ's call on you. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I think there's another kind of a approach that some families in our church have taken to where they don't have children. Mm -hmm. um, and, and they've either, they've been very involved in, in children's ministries and, and, and or they've, targeted a family and said, we're going to be a, a surrogate auntie and uncle. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think of you and, and Tara, Matt, your family's not here. I think yeah. of, I think of Tovi and Lindy yeah. and their family's not here in Ontario. They're in South Africa. Mm -hmm. And they, so they don't have grandparents. They don't have aunts and uncles uh, for babysitting, for other input into their children's lives. You guys don't have that. Mm -hmm. And what a blessing that is when other people come alongside mm -hmm. yeah. and kind of adopt your family. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and so we're, maybe we're just, just not outwardly focused enough to see the opportunities around mm -hmm. us that maybe, well, you know, it's a disappointment, but God has a special place for us to make mm -hmm. a difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I, 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 we probably don't teach on that enough or share that enough. And I'm sorry for that, but we're sharing it now. So. Absolutely. <laughs> That's why we're having a podcast. So there you go. Yeah. Yeah, no, and is and speaking to that on the other side of receiving that. Right. Um, yeah, there's no greater blessing. It's so interesting when you leave everything behind. And mm. and Toby and Lindy's even more more so than us, because I mean at least our family we can hop on a flight and we don't have to travel for twenty hours. They do come and visit they once in a while. Not enough it's, if you're listening. Yeah, no, that was good. And uh, <laughs> you know, and and it's great when they're here, but but to to step away from everything and you know forsake everything else for the sake of following after Christ it is such an incredible encouragement when he re in some ways replaces the things that you left behind mm. not replaces maybe but supplements the things you left behind mm. um with you know the, the aunts and the uncles and the grandparents mm. and the and the, the brothers and sisters that you you don't get to see but now you've got this massive family around you that's loving and caring for you and and if we didn't have that, I don't, I don't know. I don't yeah. know where we'd be. But uh, Well, Jesus said no one has left father, house right. or brother yeah. or sisters or mother, father, children or lands for my sake and for the gospel is that he has not received a hundredfold. Now in this time, yeah. houses, brethren, sisters, yeah. mothers, father. That's, that's Mark 10 um, and, uh, and, 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 and Matthew 19. We need to go. You know, where do those people come from? Well, that's the rest of us. Yeah, like we need to that yeah. to play that role for each other, that's right? right? Absolutely. Yeah, and, and yeah. that's living in an intentional, mm -hmm. profound community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and that math checks out for the record. So I mean, there you go. And you hope there our family so much bigger, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, yeah. so it's good. I did get a call uh, from from a couple just going through the the the, the adoption process now, mm. and it can be it can be as painful yeah. as any childbirth. Yeah. Uh, gestation, mm. uh, uh, even miscarriage when they take the kid away 
and you thought you were going to get it to keep it, and yeah. you have a new daughter or son, and then all of a sudden something changes. It, it's a hard emotional journey. Mm. Um, and uh, so, you know, do go in with your eyes open with a lot of support and be willing to pay some of that painful price, even of adopting and fostering. Mm -hmm. and I will Maybe say, we're getting off track, but yeah. no, like, <laughs> yeah, sorry. But you're, you're hearing us talk about <laughs> specific people that we know. Yeah. And, and so I just want to say, if these are any of your stories, why don't you reach out to one of us? Because a lot of these people who have walked through these, all, all like every different scenario you can imagine, mm -hmm. they would be so happy to sit down with Amen. you. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, who absolutely. can actually relate to you because they've walked through it yeah. and yeah. can understand your pain. And maybe you, you don't know anybody who's walked through your specific journey. But, but re reach out to mm -hmm. any of our pastors and we can help connect you to someone at New Hope who has walked a similar ground to where you are or where you might be walking. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the last question I want to ask you guys uh, is uh, related to uh, a piece on this whole God's design when you talked about being godly fathers and mothers. Uh, I've heard you talk about this concept a lot um, as, you know, if we would just raise up godly fathers and mothers who raised up godly children, like that's actually what changes culture. And that's actually what gets people off the streets. And that's actually what, you know, changes the world around us. Can you just unpack that a little bit because I've heard it and I love it, but I don't know that a lot of our listeners have really hmm. gotten into our philosophy of ministry about why we focus so hard on raising good families. On the long game yeah, approach. Yeah, on the long game approach, right? The infinite game, as uh, Simon Sinek would say. But uh, but can you just share a little bit of that, PC, for us? I'm tempted to share something that will be upsetting. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you always? <laughs> so, dear listener, please try try and hear this try and hear this. I'll, I'll use this example. Yeah. I will say at marriage seminars that good marriages are made up of good people and bad marriages are made up of bad people. Mm -hmm. That's There's a condemnation piece to that. Mm -hmm. If your marriage is bad, it's your fault. Mm -hmm. There's a There's a hope to that. There's nothing other in your marriage than the two of you. There's not some ethereal thing called a marriage. Mm -hmm. There's not some outward, outward dynamic called a marriage, and you just happen to inherited a bad one. No, you, we created a good marriage by being good people to each other. Yeah, yeah. And so if it's bad, and here's where I want you to hear, the hope, the power, you have the power. You have the hope and the power. You can both make your marriage good. Yeah, It's possible. The marriage mm -hmm. is nothing other than the two people involved. Yeah. Well, a culture, a nation is nothing other than the individuals in the nature, in the, in the culture, mm -hmm. in the nation. When you get a predominance of good people, you have a good country. Mm -hmm. If we want to change the culture, I have to change and you have to change and my family has to change and our neighbors have to change and on it goes. There's nothing other than that. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's maybe a spiritual dynamic, but we we fight it, you know, one at one at a time, mm -hmm. and uh, and so yeah, it all comes down to a family following Jesus, being a godly family, which will indeed change uh, the, the the nation. That that's mm -hmm. it. That's yeah. that's the key right there. That's it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and Sarah, maybe just as a follow up, how have you seen that play out? Um, hmm. just, I mean, you do so much with our family ministry. How do you see this play out practically? A lot of ways, but I, I think the one that maybe is most striking to me is, uh, when maybe kids start coming to day camp or junior youth and then their families start getting involved in church and then their families reach out and sort of say like, I want to, I want to start teaching my kids about Jesus. How do I do that? Yeah. And you see that their desire to be a, a good mother and father um, will propel their own spiritual growth and discipline. And then they're able to uh, learn how to disciple their kids. And them having to learn how to disciple their kids, they are being discipled. I think like recently of Caitlin Hall's baptism testimony. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, before she came to New Hope, she didn't understand that God was a thing mm -hmm. like no concept. Right. And so we got to be a huge part of teaching her. And through those years though, like Mark and Andrea became 
disciples Mm -hmm. and now they're doing amazing things in their home. And those girls are, you know, they'll just barely remember when they didn't know Jesus, but only just, and, uh, they're going to be these like dynamic, amazing young women. And uh, that's really cool to see whole families transformed and then reaching out in their wider family to their extended family and their community. And just thinking of all the people now Andrea connects with and helps them make a new hope, their home. And so the, just that uh, the knock on effect uh, is, is just so cool and so powerful. Awesome. Yeah. There is a, a dynamic of the majority. Mm-hmm. Um, when when you're the minority, you have a hard time being an influence. Like when we when we pick uh, registrants for day camp, we 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 want to invite, we want to have non church folks come. Mm-hmm. Kind of want to have a two third church, one third new to church, um, so that the majority can influence the minority. Yeah, good company. Mm-hmm. Uh, changes peer pressure mm-hmm. is contagious. Mm-hmm. Bad company ruins good morals. We we understand that. So, if you are the vast minority in a in a dark culture, it's going to be really really hard. There's a tipping point mm-hmm. where all of a sudden, you know, you go into a new neighborhood, and this is how we act in this neighborhood. We all cut our grass and we all pick up our garbage. Yeah, and right. There's a pe- certain peer pressure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a certain peer pressure in this school. In this school, this is how we function. Mm-hmm. This is how we dress. This is how mm-hmm. we behave. And so, and that's become, because there's a majority there and the, and the minority fall into it. So if you're in a dark place trying to turn it around, you got to prepare yourself, you know, steal yourself for those initial uh, yeah. seasons until there's enough of a difference that it starts to become, this is how we function. Mm-hmm. Cultures can change for yep. the good or the, the bad. Mm-hmm. It, it, it does depend on individuals for sure. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Guys, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast today. Uh, such good insight and... Uh, Thank you for sharing it with us. To our listeners, thank you so much for joining us. If this is the first time you're listening to the podcast or if you're checking out New Hope for the uh, the first time, I'd encourage you to jump on our website or our app and fill out a connect card. We'd love to connect with you. And we'll talk to you next time on Digging Deeper.